Hello, my name is Laura Jarvis and we are at Rainbow Gardens Nursery. We were talking about bees last time in our kind of a pollinator series. So we're going to carry on today with the cutest creatures on earth. Do you all know what that is? If you haven't guessed by now, it's hummingbirds. So who could not stop and watch a hummingbird eat? They are so, so, so cute. So all of us want more of them in our yard. And that is a very common question when people are coming into our uh, butterfly and pollinator garden area. They want to know, you know, what can I plant that is going to draw hummingbirds? What's going to feed hummingbirds? So before I start with the plants, I want to say a couple of things about hummingbird gardening, if there is such a thing. Um, first of all, lots and lots and lots and lots of people uh, have feeders, and that's to draw them in and, and be able to watch them and take pictures. And that's all good and well, but if we have a feeder, you have to take care of it. You have to keep that clean. Um, number one, if you're buying store-bought nectar, it has red dye in it. That is not the best thing, just like sugars and dyes for us, maybe not the best thing for the health of your hummingbirds. The red in the solution is not drawing that hummingbird. What draws the hummingbird is the little red flowers that they paint on those. They see that red flower. So this is what draws hummingbirds. It's a reddish or pinkish or orangish bright colored trumpet shaped bloom. And why is that? Well, that's because it fits their beak and tongue absolutely perfectly. So they put their little beak in there, and I don't know if y'all have seen or not, but their little tongue is just about as long as their little beak. So they get in there and they drink that nectar out of there. So that's what we're going for as far as trying to draw them into our yard. The more plants that you have that look like this with different types of little tubular flowers on them, the more uh, hummingbirds you're going to draw into your yard. The second thing I want to say is when you do hang that nectar, you need to change it on a regular basis. Minimum once a week, but really if you can change it about every three days, that is much healthier. We don't want to hang that up months later go, oh yeah, let's go see what's in there. Maybe we need to fill it. That is really, really, really bad for them. So there's bacteria and all kinds of things start feeding in the sugars in that solution. Now you can make your own solution and that would be four to one. So if I'm making my solution, I'm going to use one cup of sugar, three cups of water. So I'm going to cook that in a pan, bring it to a very mild boil. I'm going to turn off the heat, make sure it's stirred real well, let it cool and then I'm going to strain it. I use coffee filters if I'm doing that in my yard and run that through that. You can fill your your feeders with that and then you can put the rest of the solution in your refrigerator and that way you can fill it up uh, as needed and it's always fresh. Um, that solution in your refrigerator is going to last about a maximum of, of about two weeks. So, with all of that being said, it is preferable to have flowers in your yard that draw them and feed them over a, a solution of sugar water. I had this great idea about three years ago that I was going to plant a vine on my shepherd's hook where the hummingbird feeder used to be. So, I use a hanging basket and I have cypress vine, which is a beautiful little red trumpet flower. And it grows in the hanging basket and it grows up over the shepherd's hook. And it has little red flowers where hummingbird feeders should go. So if you have a hummingbird that's used to feeders, he's gonna see that 
and he's going to go towards that. So the Hummers we have in our yard, they make the rounds every single day. And if that little cypress vine doesn't have blooms on them, he's looking all over trying to find the blooms. So it is a, uh, a regular feeding path for him. So another thing that is super, super, super cool about our San Antonio area here in South Texas is we are a highway for migratory birds. So it's kind of a funnel. It, it goes out wide through the Midwest of the United States and it funnels right through our area. Uh, some have called it the I-35 corridor and um, not only butterflies, but lots of birds migrate through that same pattern and then go south. So in the fall, you're going to see more hummingbirds than any other time of year. So if you were going to get extra plants ready for hummingbirds to see and maybe even get to see some different types of hummingbirds, late summer and fall would be the time to do that. So if I'm prepping right now, I'm going to make sure that I have fall bloomers that are going to draw them and feed them because when they're on a migratory path, they need extra food. So one of our favorites here is a native, it's called flame acanthus and it gets, it's just barely starting um, and it will get covered in flame colored blooms and it draws hummingbirds like crazy. And this plant blooms through the fall migration and it's, I'm, I'm sure it was made just for that purpose, just for those babies coming south. So you can expect to see several different types of hummingbirds too, which is really, really fun. Um, one winter we had a calliope hummingbird that stayed all winter with us. I have some of this beautiful tropical salvia which is a uh, salvia coccinea and this little red baby is kind of a neat plant a lot of our red salvias are perennial this is actually a true annual it is a true native and in a lot of our wildflower seeds you'll find this uh, scarlet sage sometimes they call it we call it autumn sage sometimes red tropical red salvia is how it is marked here and not only hummingbirds, but a lot of the sulfur, which are the yellow butterflies, are really drawn to this plant. This seeds, it reseeds itself. And if it doesn't freeze out, it will bloom continuously, uh, especially in the fall. So this is always a good draw for your little hummers and one of the easiest to grow. Another thing about this plant is we have a hard time here getting plants to grow in shade or partial shade. This does very well in partial shade. And so those of you who have those problem areas in your yard, this might be a really great plant. Something that I do not have today, but Joelle's gonna bring it up for you so you can see. It is, this is a really interesting plant. You guys are gonna love this. So firecracker fern, has a, a very beautiful weeping habit to it. And it gets these beautiful sprays of tubular red-orange flowers on it. It's great for hanging baskets. For those of you who have apartments or areas where you need a hanging basket or even a, a focal point to take pictures. So hang that instead of a hummingbird feeder and they bloom all summer long. They can take the heat, they're drought tolerant. They're just a wonderful plant. But the neatest thing about firecracker fern is it has to be pollinated by hummingbirds to reproduce. Imagine that, solely by hummingbirds. So the hummingbirds love that plant, but that plant has to have hummingbirds to be pollinated. So perfect, perfect relationship between plant and bird. Um, some of our other favorites here that we love, love, love that are going to give us uh, the color we want. Uh, we've got trumpet vines. Trumpet vines come in all shapes and forms these days. Some of the cultivars may not be so good, 
but a lot of the more old-fashioned type of trumpet vine, um, they are going to be very, very, very good for hummingbirds and full of nectar. Uh, the only thing about it is the, the old-fashioned trumpet vine uh, that can be somewhat invasive, so be careful where you put it. Some of us might want to tame some of these things down a little bit by putting them in a very large pot with uh, something cement underneath them so those roots don't go down and out and around and in your neighbor's yard and everybody's unhappy because they can't get the, your plant out of their yard. Firebush. Firebush is really cool. What a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful plant. That always looks like it's been trimmed. It starts with the buds and um, a little disappointing to the hummers when they come over and they're not fully bloomed yet. But for us, it gives us lots of gorgeous landscape color. I prefer the oranges, the redder, the deeper color tones. Nowadays, they've got a lot of different cultivars of that as well and some may or may not be really, really great for nectar. But the dwarf firebush and the regular old-fashioned firebush, great in our landscapes. They always look beautiful. They are a true perennial. They're gonna die to the ground in the winter and then come out each spring. And you don't have to trim on them. They're gonna have a nice oval shape to them. Very, very, very pretty. Lots of interest to a landscape. Uh, here's another one of our semi-shady. Uh, favorites. This is a shrimp plant. Shrimp plants are great and um, this one right here, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Um, they also have different colors uh, coming out of the bract. The bract draws them but they're going to feed off of the little flowers that come out of the bract. So I'm going to choose the ones with the redder flowers coming out of the bract. That's going to get more attention from your hummingbird. So we have a lot of different red salvias around here. We have a few new varieties that we're trying out um, to find out if the hummers like feeding on them. We're not always positive with the newer varieties, but what you're looking for are the tubular type shaped blooms that are a little bit larger and your hummingbirds will feed off those regularly. Um, another thing that we don't have here but really gets a, a lot of interest from the hummingbirds is the red yucca. They have those big old stalks of those coral blooms on them and um, they, you will always see hummingbirds. Out in the wild I see, you know, there's, there's no flowers, no flowers, a red yucca with big spikes of blooms and there's your hummingbirds. So that one, uh, if we're doing a xeriscape landscape, uh, some of these red salvias, the red yuccas, the firebush, the flame acanthus, these are all really, really wonderful for your xeriscape and um, they're gonna be easy for you to take care of and they're gonna be a low water and maintenance for you. So those are at the top of my list for my hummingbirds as well as my zero escape landscape. In our San Antonio area here, we have black chin uh, hummingbirds and uh, we have uh, something that I always look for is the ruby throated in the fall. Those are gonna be migrating and those are very, very, very pretty. They have like the description, a very beautiful ruby colored throat, just the male. The females on both of those two types of hummers have kind of a greenish, they are iridescent in the sun and um, a little bit grayer on the underside of their belly, uh, but uh, the, the ruby throated tends to be just a little bit larger than our native black chin hummingbirds. But, you know, I challenge you to take a look this fall and see if you can see different types of them. Uh, it's really exciting if you, you know, are able to see something that we don't normally see here. And if you have good food in your yard, who knows? Maybe they'll stay for several weeks or maybe you're even lucky enough like we were to have one stay all winter. 
Hopefully we'll see you here at Rainbow Garden soon. And if you need help picking out any of the pollinator plants, uh, check in with, uh, my name is Laura again, and you can check in with Robin. She is very, very knowledgeable and we would love to see you soon. Thank you so much.